Hello. In this session, we're going to talk about configuring reporting actions for web control. Now, a reporting action is simply an event that occurs that's associated with an alarm coming in in web control. So an example might be when a particular alarm comes in, we notify someone by paging them or sending an email. Let's take a look at what I mean. I'm going to go to the alarms page. And of course, we can see a list of alarms associated with the Atlanta HKC critical view. So let's go ahead and look at all categories. And we can see that now we see all of the alarms that have come in in the Atlanta area and below. Remember, alarms are hierarchical in nature, reflecting all of the alarms that have come in, not only at the location you're at, but all of the locations below you. And I remind you of this because actions are also hierarchical in nature. So when I look at the actions page, what we're going to see is a list of um, categories, of course, and a list of alarms. And I can associate reporting actions with one or more of these alarms. And anytime an alarm comes in from anywhere in Atlanta or below, that reporting action will be triggered. In other words, reporting actions are also hierarchical in nature. So if, for example, I want to create an email every time, let's say, a freeze protection alarm comes in, I can do so. Since I've made that reporting action at the Atlanta area, any control program at the Atlanta area or below that has a freeze alarm will also trigger this reporting action. That's something that's very important to realize. Now, I can associate the same uh, reporting action with one, with one or even more alarms by using the controller shift keys. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have to go to the freeze alarm itself. So let's add an email reporting action. I click the add button. And of course, I have some configuration. And the first thing is, who's going to receive this email when an alarm comes in? Well, in this case, it's going to be my guest at Prestige Corporation. Right. Um, the from, this is what is going to be in the from line of the email. So when the recipient gets the email, it could by default say web control server, or I could customize it to say something like, Prestige Corporation, BAS server. I can copy people on the alarm. Now as a subject, I could type in freeze or freeze protection. I'm going to stick with this default. This default is the short message, and it's what's called a field code. And field codes are dynamic text, and they're denoted, or denoted rather, with dollar signs. Now the reason I'm going to do this is if later I associate this with more than one type of alarm, in other words, discharge temp and freeze protection, instead of having to make two reporting actions, one that says freeze and one that says discharge, I can just have web control look at the short message in the particular alarm that comes in and populate the subject line with it. And the short message is generally a description of the alarm. So you can think of that as kind of a wild card or dynamic data. Now I have to specify a mail host. This is something you need to get from the IT administrator. Okay, this is not your email, uh, your email mail host script. Rather, it's the, the mail host or the mail server that the facility itself is using. And the IT administrator will give this to you. Okay? So in this case, it happens to be mail.prestigecorp.com. Now, if I have to log in to get my mail, and most people do, I would check this box and I would put in the username and password associated with this particular account. And the IT guy is probably going to make an account for web control. Okay, so web control is going to be the one sending this email. So web control is going to have to log in to mail.prestigecorp.com to send this particular email. The IT administrator will also specify whether or not you need to send the mail as a MIME attachment. They're probably not going to do that, but if they do, simply click this box. Now we have the message text. What's going to show up in the alarms view when this alarm gets delivered? Well, again, we see more field codes, and we know that it's dynamic data. So it will say the time the alarm came in, for instance, or the short message uh, that's in the actual alarm itself. And so in this way, instead of filling out a bunch of custom things, we simply let web control look at that alarm and populate it based on the actual time and the actual alarm coming in itself. And I can add, of course, I can delete. 
um, rather these particular things by simply highlighting them, deleting them, or I can add additional ones. And there's lots of different field codes that you can get and simply look in the help files for a description of each one. Most of them are self-explanatory. Now, we have this section called run conditions. This is very interesting. By default, web control will send, or rather will execute this reporting action when the alarm gets delivered and when it returns to normal. Okay, it's very important. So if this freeze alarm trips, it will send me, because uh, I am Mike at prestigecorp.com, an email notifying me, and when it returns to normal, it will do the same thing. Now I can change this, however, by clicking this box and saying, hey, I only want to get the, the uh, email if it goes to alarm, or I only want to get it when it returns to normal. I can choose either one of those. I'm going to leave it as, as default, because I want to know not only when there's a problem, but I want to know when it's been corrected. Uh, a second thing I could do is I could say, listen, let's wait, let's say for one hour, one minute, it's completely configurable, and then execute if it hasn't returned to normal or if it hasn't been acknowledged. And this is kind of a way of escalating alarms. So for example, let's say that I'm not the person who actually addresses these problems, okay? I'm just the person that wants to have information in case they're not being addressed. I could simply say, listen, Run when it transitions to alarm, but wait an hour if it hasn't been returned to normal. In other words, I only want to get an email if it's been an alarm for more than an hour and someone hasn't addressed it. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm just showing you how it works. We're going to leave them at its default. And then finally, I can say, listen, there's, there's special groups in this building. For instance, a scheduled group called sales. And I only want to get a particular alarm if it's associated with a zone that's triggering an alarm when that particular group is supposed to be occupied. And, and a nice use case for this would be, okay, my sales team, I know they meet every Thursday. Maybe I will do, in that case, want to get a high temp alarm if the sales team is supposed to be there and it's supposed to be occupied. Otherwise, I'm not necessarily as concerned with those high temperature alarms in that particular zone. So this run condition basically is a way to escalate the alarms and it's a new feature that has been added with Web Control 4. Now, the last thing I want to uh, show you is the ability to attach reports. Now, you can attach reports by clicking this box, and then you can pick either from any of the default Web Control uh, reports, which we've talked about in the reports video, or any custom reports that you've got. It would also be in this list. Now, for the case of a freeze protection, it doesn't really make sense. But a use case for this would be creating an alarm that you schedule using logic that its only purpose is to send reports. Okay, so for instance, I have a special alarm, and that alarm happens to be named reports. It can be scheduled, and I have it scheduled every, let's say, Friday night to send a report in PDF form or Excel form or whatever that details um, things like effective schedule. So when I get in Monday morning, I can look at my schedule. Okay? And you can uh, attach a report not only to an email reporting action, but also the right to file reporting action. And this is also a new feature in Web Control 4. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now we can see, of course, that we do have an email reporting action associated with all of the freeze alarms on the first floor and below. So this is essentially how you set up a reporting action in web control. Now let's talk about some of the other reporting actions. We have uh, the alarm pop-up reporting action. And what this does is it has web control notify a remote client and pop up a little window that says, listen, an alarm has come in. Now what's nice about this is the person on that client machine does not have to be logged into web control. It's a separate application that pops up. So it sits in the tray bar, the person's working, and the alarm suddenly pops up in front of them. And it basically notifies somebody who isn't actually in the system or necessarily paying attention to the system 100% of the time. And a, UK, a use case for that might be security guards that are monitoring other monitors. All of a sudden, an alarm pop-up comes up and says, hey, there's something you need to address in the building. And I know you're not typically sitting on the alarm screen, so I'm letting you know. Uh, we can send the alarms to a printer. We can run an external program when an alarm comes in. So we can point this to an executable that runs when an alarm comes in. We can page people. We just saw send email. 
We can send SNMP tracks. We can write to a third party vendor's backend equipment. In other words, there's a third party backend vendor out there that has a device, uh, a backend device, and we can write properties to back that object in that particular device. We can save certain alarms to a special area of the database that can be accessed by third party backend vendors. And then finally, we can write to file. And I just want to remind you that if you add a write to file reporting action, and it would basically save the alarms in a text file for you, you can also associate a report with that. And so you could basically write a report every single night or every week or however you schedule it using this reporting action. And this is, as I said, a new feature of Web Control 4. So this kind of wraps up our configuring reporting action session. The important thing to realize is that all of these alarm actions are available to you. I would uh, remind you, though, that send SNMP trap, write property, and write to database are all part of the advanced alarming package and do not come with the base version of Web Control.